Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we are looking at the Wednesday NBA slate. We have 11 games tonight, so let's get right into it. As always, if you enjoy the picks, I appreciate it for the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Yesterday, the three-gamer was really crazy because not only were the Nets already shorthanded, you know, by the time we were approaching lock, but then James Harden got ruled out as well as Bruce Brown, so they only had eight active bodies. So you needed to load up on them. And I went with, like, Cam Thomas um, as a good value. He did not come through at all. You needed uh, David Duke and some of the other guys off the bench. But overall, FanDuel hit up 339. DraftKings fell short, so maybe we can get back on track on DraftKings today. Uh, we have a great slate to do that, so look, I'm looking forward to it. Looking at the uh, point guard plays today, we have a couple of guys above $10,000. You have Trey Young, Russell Westbrook, DeJounte Murray as your three guys right at 10 k Lillard is almost there at 99 out of that group, definitely got to go Trey Young over the rest. He's been um, playing so well this year, especially as of late. He's been super consistent. 61, 57, 59, 55, 60, getting you double-doubles every night with the assists. Rebounding has gone up for him as well, playing a ton of minutes. The matchup is solid, as you can get, against Orlando. So Trey Young would be my favorite play above $9,500. Going in the mid-range here in the 8K to 7K range, uh, I think you have to take a hard look at Drew Holiday today. He's $7,500. They already don't have Giannis uh, dealing with, uh, he got put in the protocols. And Chris Middleton hyperextended his, his knee, so he's questionable. I think there's a chance that you know, already not having Giannis, they just decide to hold out Chris Middleton. Uh, but either way, Drew Holiday would be a great play. He'd be like uh, almost a must play if Middleton is also ruled out. But right now, assuming Middleton does play, uh, I still have to go Drew Holiday as one of the best point guard options. He just takes a, a much bigger role without Giannis. The whole team will benefit. You have Terry Rozier at $7,300. He played decent in his first game back, missing 12 days, 33 minutes, 8 of 14. They got blown out by Dallas. So he only played 33 minutes and... He kind of got it done later in the game. They started off the game slow. I don't mind going back to him. It's a, a fine spot here. Reggie Jackson at 68. Not somebody that I'm looking to prioritize at all. It's a tough matchup against the Jazz, and Paul George might play today. In the 6K range, you have Tyus Jones at 61. He looks very appealing. Uh, we have Armani Brooks at 55. They do not have Eric Gordon today, so Brooks will... He'll probably get over 30 minutes, like 34 minutes like he was. It's a tough spot, though. I never like targeting teams against Cleveland. But if they don't have, there's also a chance they don't have Christian Woods. In that situation, you'd probably have to get two, one or two Houston Rockets. Gabe Vincent looks good off. He's been starting in place of uh, Martin and 34 minutes last game. Tyler Hero is questionable today, so Vincent already looks like a decent value. He'd look even better if Hero gets ruled out. And then at the bottom, if they don't have Chris Middleton, you can probably look to like George Hill or somebody like that at the bottom at 3K. At shooting guard, top end plays are Paul George 10-5. That's a fade, missing a couple games with an elbow going into Utah. I just don't want to pay over 10-5 for him. Ingram, good spot. 92 is probably a tournament option. He's been uh, a lot better recently in terms of putting up 50s, uh, but still has a lower floor than some of the other stars. But the matchup is solid enough to where... I'd look to him in tournaments. Uh, and I don't play Bar Bradley Beal. Russell was questionable. That make an impact on Edwards. Oubre is pretty expensive, 82. That seems like a pass. Same thing with Garland at 79. I'd rather go Terry Rozier. Save $600. Go down to like Josh Giddy if you wanted to take a shot with him. It's a great spot, and they do not have Lou Dort today, so more, uh, more usage for Giddy. But give me Brunson. It's just been bad luck for Brunson and some of these starters besides Przingis who got it done in limited minutes last game. But back-to-back -back blowouts against the uh, Thunder and last game again against Charlotte. So we haven't seen Brunson play the full minutes that he normally will in a close game without Luka Doncic, which would be like 34, 35, 36. And in those minutes situations, he'd be still a good value pick at 67. So hopefully that happens today. Hopefully the Lakers can stay in the game. Other plays at 6K would be Desmond Bain at 63. They blew out the Sixers last game without Embiid, who was a late scratch. Uh, but Bain has been productive. His price has come down uh, a little bit. He's down to just 63. He gives you 40-point upside and plays a good amount of minutes and takes a ton of shots. Uh, we have like Simons 
came back down to earth last game. It's just really relying on his three-point shooting, so it's, it's tough to trust him um, when he's priced like $5,500. Still like Armani Brooks in that situation over like Simons. You can maybe look to uh, like Tim Hardaway at 56 for tournaments. Buddy is cheap at 52, but he's only a tournament play now with the minutes that he's been playing. Garrison Matthews looks better today just because they are limited without Gordon. Ross has GPP upside as usual. He's been getting more minutes recently. He got 35, 30, 26, 33. So two out of the last three games, he's played over 33 minutes. That's something to keep an eye on. He can always catch fire and you know put up 35, 40 fantasy points. Small forward. Don't know if I'll get to any of these top-end guys. Uh, if Middleton plays, he looks like a great play without Giannis. Um, if Middleton doesn't play, then you can look to some of the value on Milwaukee. Like, Holiday would be a great play. Portis would be a lock. And then you can plug in, like, maybe they start Tanasis in his place. Or Grayson Allen would be a better play. Uh, Connaughton would be a better play. Right now, I have $6,400 Dylan Brooks. Same situation. He's uh, got missed a minutes with the blowout last game. He was on pace to put up well over 40 fantasy points. That would have been 40 fantasy points in two or four games. He still takes a ton of shots. He's still got a, a lot of usage without John ja Morant. The price tag is reasonable. The matchup is solid. Portland, back-to-back, -back, they very poor defensively. They're coming off of an overtime game, so their defense might be even worse. Jayshon Tate, if they don't have Christian Wood, would be a great play. They already don't have Eric Gordon, so he would get a lot of usage. And he's a guy that can contribute with the rebounding, the assist. We saw him already flash his monster ceiling with 69 and a half, and that was a game where both... Kevin Porter and Christian Wood got hurt early on, so he kind of just took over. Uh, 4K range. Don't have anybody that looks that crazy. Like Mar Matthews looks decent. Needed to take a shot with Tim. You have Ross, 41, GPP play. In the 3K range, it'd be some of these Bucks players that you can look to if they don't have Middleton. Power forward. Pay up for LeBron, probably 11-1. But we don't need to. He's expensive. Davis missed the last couple of games. He's questionable. So if Davis plays, that would hurt LeBron's uh, ceiling. Sabonis, 95. Not having to deal with Giannis is a plus. But his price tag has kind of gone up. Porzingis was on pace to just absolutely... He already did destroy the slate, 53 and 25. But if he played like 35 minutes, he probably would have put up 70. He was that hot from the game. Jaron Jackson, 72. He looks better on Fanduel. He's still playable just because he gives you upside with the blocks and can hit some threes if he's feeling it. Yeah, for the value picks here, you have a couple guys right at $4,500, $4,600. Bagley at 45 He started the previous game against Cleveland, then he struggled a bit, which you would expect against Cleveland's daunting defense. Came back off the bench against Toronto, and they started Check Metu, and Metu struggled. So I could see them going back to Bagley as a starter. 45 against Washington, I'd have some interest there. But going with Nance makes some sense as well. He's 46, similar price, $100 more, plays big minutes, and played uh, 28 minutes last night. Flirted with a double-double, 9-8, and eight, 3 steals, 4 assists. He just can contribute in some of the, uh, definitely the rebounding and the points, get you a couple of assists, some blocks, maybe a steal or two. Um, now that he's getting more minutes, I think he's like a great value pick. Uh, and then at center, can pay up at top for Jokic. Never wrong to pay up for Jokic. He's 12-2, continues to be productive. He got ejected with six minutes to go against Washington. He would have put up probably 80 in that game. He's just been doing everything. Will Barton looks like he's going to be back after missing the last couple. So that's going to take some of the scoring burden off of Jokic, but he's still going to get you 15-plus rebounding, get you like double-digit assist opportunities a game. Just with the usage rate that he has, it's very tough for him to hit to not hit value, especially against Minnesota, who really struggle defensively. Uh, if he wants to go cheaper, Embiid is questionable. Don't know if anybody would uh, take a shot with him if after what he did to them last game, which uh, I don't know, he wasn't even popular, but still that stigma of the having the chance to get ruled out after lock is not going to sit well with people. Needed to go with a value pick or go with a mid-range play. And you have some guys here in the 8K range that look somewhat decent, but uh, I like Portis at only 71. It's a great spot against Indy to just get some rebounding opportunities. They play big, so you're going to need somebody like Portis in the game most of the time to uh, you know, get those rebounds. Without Giannis, or, and without Giannis, they don't have Cousins, they don't have Brook Lopez. They're really short on bigs. So Portis should probably see 34, 35 minutes today. He does give you big upside, 
and he's not afraid to shoot. Wanted to go with the value pick at center, below like 6K, 5K range. Deadman right at 51 looks makes some sense. Zubats, if you want it to be a tournament option at 51. In the 4K range, don't see anything that looks that appealing. Drummond, if Embiid is out, would be a lock at 47. But that's about it. And last but not least, um, in the guard spot, I'm going back to uh, back to Memphis and plugging in Desmond Bain. Just think he's a very affordable at 63 compared to where he's been. Brooks and Bain still will take a lot of the shots for the team. They're both pretty solid, solidly priced. The matchup is solid against Portland. A lot to like with a guy that gives you 30, 40 point upside and does give you like, you know, he's flashed 45, 47 a couple times this year. So that's about it. Still leaves you 57 left. I'm sure we'll get a lot of news on the slate that will change it up. But as a first look, I feel pretty solid about it. Uh, let's go over to FanDuel now. Okay, FanDuel point guard plays. Uh, you have Trey Young at 10 1. He looks great. You can pay up for him if you wanted to. Uh, Westbrook, 92. Doesn't look that interesting. I'd rather look to DeJounte Murray in that situation. Lillard is underpriced once again on FanDuel at only 87. I'll take a shot with him once again today. White is too expensive. You know, Mitchell, SGA, they're fine. I just don't get to them too often. Drew Holiday still looks like a great play at 8,000. Just not having Giannis there and probably not having Chris Middleton. Uh, Holiday looked way better than Fox and Rozier. I like Brogdon at 75, Lowry at 7K. They're two good options in the 7K range. You can even look to Garland at 75 there. Uh, not too much to like in the 6K range besides Brunson, but I look to him at shooting guard. The 5K range, you have Tyus Jones, somewhat interesting, at 58. But I'm not going to play Simons. I'm not going to play like Beverly at 56. Uh, you have Cody Martin, still started last game, but he's not going to get heavy minutes every game now that they at least have Rozier back. And you could maybe look to like Devontae Graham or Gabe Vincent, but feel like there's enough plays at the top end to kind of make it work at point guard. At shooting guard, go back to Jalen Brunson on both sides. He, on Fanduel especially, he looks like a great play. Do have some guys that are priced a little expensive. You have three of the Charlotte guys right here in the 75 to 8K range. So you can pick and choose between them if you wanted to uh, guess which one. I would probably go on Fanduel at least. It would be Rozier, then Oubre, then Hayward. But just give me Brunson at 62. He's inexpensive. Take a shot on Dylan Brooks. You have Karis LeVert been playing better. You have Will Barton at 6K. You have uh, even Desmond Bain at $6,300. You even have Anthony Edwards is cheap at 72. So I don't think I'm going to pay you know, over like 8K for my shooting guards on FanDuel except for you know, Drew Holiday. Small forward. A lot of the guys at the top are questionable. Paul George at 89 looks decent if he plays. Way better than he does on DraftKings, but it's still a tough spot. Wanted to go to like the 6K range, which is strong once again. Just give me uh, Dylan Brooks, 62. I like Brooks, Lovert, Barton are the three best plays in the 6K range. Uh, Jay Sean Tate, if there's no Christian Wood, would make a lot of sense at 63. And the 5K range, don't have anybody that looks that interesting, like Nance is too expensive, Covington's too expensive, Buddy Heal's not been doing very much, and looks like they're going to move him before the deadline. Power forward, you can pay up for Sabonis at 9K. He's pretty cheap. Porzingis looks decent, 87. Bobby Portis looks great at 77. But Jaron Jackson is too cheap. He continues to be too cheap on Fando. He's only $6,400. He plays good minutes, not having John Morant. He's had a couple of big games already with the blocks. Can hit some threes. And I don't know why he's this cheap, because he's done nothing but really hit value. There's always risk that he gets into foul trouble, but even in like 26 minutes, he's still been productive. And then at center, get up to Jokic at 11.5. If not, I would say your second best bet might be Bobby Portis at 77. You can plug in Portis at power forward and maybe try to get up to Jokic. But I still want to try to get up to Lillard. I want to get up to Drew Holiday, so it might be tough. Right now, to get up to Jokic, maybe we'll get some more news throughout the day. And then other plays in the 6K range would be Jakob Pertl. At 68, just given how good the matchup is. Drummond, if there's no Embiid, it would be a great play. Nurkic is only 59. That looks great. Uh, but overall, I feel pretty good about these five. I think at least get us started. 
So that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Best of luck tonight. Stay tuned for Twitter for updates. I'll post my prize picks there as well later in the day. And I'll see you all next time.